Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, I'm going to react to leaked footage of the A10 Warthog in action. Now, the A10 Warthog is like a legendary uh, military plane. I think it's been in action for like, man, are we like 60 years, maybe something like that? Maybe even more? It's got like a huge, super powerful like machine gun at the front of it. And uh, it, it fires off at like an amazing amount of rounds per minute. I think it's something like... I think it's almost like 3,000 rounds a minute it can fire off. It's just absolutely insane. And, you know, footage like this, you know, from it actually being used in battlefields, often is like classified. You, you know, it takes a very, very long time for the military, the government to approve release of this type of footage. So whenever we get, you know, to see some of this stuff, I just love it. I jump on it immediately. This should be a lot of fun. Let's do it. The footage you're about to see was gathered in Afghanistan by the USAF combat camera during the summer fighting season of 2014. Some personal interview for this video asked for them to be identified by their calls. Wow, so this is real. Just... It starts out as uh, something that you've trained for all your life, trying to make a difference. The cool thing is, as an A-10 pilot, on times when the stars align and you're up on that mission, uh, where you get to make a difference, you get to see the reward. It's a pretty easy answer to in terms of why are we here. Number one priority is always saving guys on the ground. The people that we uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. That's my whole soul and being is that guy on the ground. Uh, you know, he could be an 18-year-old guy, 18-year-old kid with a rifle. That's all he's got, and I'm here to protect him. Mm, absolutely. Sanitized dog tags, ID card, and left right. Those two huge engines that are like, you know, mounting on its kind of like rear, it just makes the plane look so intimidating. Like, even though they're just the engines, but they, they look almost like cannons themselves. Press pocket, ED kit, watch tape, smart pack, in flight guides, maps, DTCs, RMMs. Uh, let's see, visor, pedal packs, water, snacks, seat cushion if you guys want to take that. Cell phones, you got one, do you have yours? Okay, signed out. One random Friday, uh, spring of 03, so right after the, uh, uh, the Iraqi invasion. Uh, three guys in flight suits walked into the bar on campus and started talking about flying. And I was a year away from graduating, not really knowing what I wanted to do in life. And this guy started talking about flying fighters and uh, being a fighter pilot, being in the Air Force, and how awesome it was. And uh, it kind of uh, hit, hit a nerve with me, if you will. And just hooked him in there and then. Good Attack! All right. Attack him in. How I got interested in the A-10? Uh, I can still remember it to this day. Uh, it, I was at a, uh, a, a hobby store because I, like a lot of kids, interested in aviation. I built a lot of airplane models. And this was 1979. I was in, in high school and went to the hobby store and they had a Ravel model of the, the for then, brand new A-10. Uh, it, it had only been operational for a couple of years at that point. Mm. And I just saw it and I remember, I can still remember to this day looking at the the wall of models and just trying to pick what I was going to build next and I saw this the box and the picture on there what in the world is that during so the A10 uh, was actually uh, brought into action in the 70s then not the 60s but the last month of pilot training is where you put in for what airplanes you want to fly and I was torn on the F15E or the A10 on which one I wanted to put number one on my list you know so luckily uh, uh, one of the respected IPs in our flight had flown both the A10 and the F15E and all he said to me was, Mitchell, what patch do I wear on my shoulder on Fridays? And the patch he always had on was the A-10. So <laughs> I ended up putting the A-10 as number one, uh, and I loved the mission, the thought of the mission at the time. And Because mm. you would have thought that the F-15 would be more maneuverable and stuff, so more nimble. But I guess the A-10, you know, it's just got way more like weapons and stuff on it right so maybe it's a lot more fun in that regard i 
I'm guessing they had to mute some of the stuff for uh, maybe confidentiality, something like that. That view is amazing. Those are flares, aren't it? Like uh, those lights that are like falling away from the plane. Yeah, gotta be flares. I was a uh, first lieutenant. Uh, I was 26 years old uh, when, when Desert Storm kicked off. The 26-year-old fighter pilot caught the nation's attention a few months ago when he and a partner shot down a record number of Iraqi tanks. You just never forget when you look down and realize that somebody's trying to shoot you down and you've got to, to, uh, to kill him first. My first full two years in the Air Force, it was pretty much a completely Cold War type of uh, mentality. Our training was all very low altitude. Uh, it's, uh, it doesn't seem that long ago to me, but uh, I know talking to a lot of the guys now, you know, they're, it, it, it's uh, been quite a while ago. And, and when you look at the airplane from then to now, it's, it's pretty amazing the different upgrades and, mm. uh, that we've gone through since then. But I mean, the exterior of the plane still looks quite similar to how it did back in the day. It feels like uh, most of the upgrades were like maybe in the software and uh, the weapon systems maybe, the life support systems for the pilot maybe. The A-10 is the only airframe ever that was built entirely for this mission. Yo, come on, man. They're about to do a gun run. You need to get down. Let's go, buddy. Come on, man. Mate, that machine gun is ridiculous. Saving the day, can't, baby. <laughs> Tried and trusted. There's just nothing that matches uh, the devastation that that gun can uh, can bring. What is the uh, the rounds per minute? Is it is it three thousand? Thirty mil inbound. An awesome testament to the to the aircraft. I think that the, the same gun that we used to kill main battle tanks in wow. 1991 is the same gun where uh, we can shoot a single insurgent uh, that's fleeing on a on a motorcycle or uh, or uh, shooting our, at our guys from a uh, from a tree line. Point is, you know, the A-10 was built for ground combat. Okay, ground combat has we had the old linear battlefield type where we're going to go fight a bunch of tanks going low at 100 feet. And then we've morphed into a medium altitude precision strike platform because the airplane has been updated and modified to be able to do that. I see. Sensors are great. They're amazing. They, they enable precision strike. They enable us to generate coordinates that, that, that place, are pristine. That place just got blown to smithereens. That are right on the target. But that will never replace Damn. just, you know, looking right outside of my cockpit and looking at the battle space. What am I seeing out there big picture? We do have this personal connection with the people that we uh, so closely work with, the, the guy on the ground. Uh, we hear uh, him getting scared. Request immediate re-attack, same remarks, same restrictions, from last hit, north 75 meters. We hear him getting excited. We Here we go, that's it. Good hit, good hit, good hit. <laughs> The noise it makes That's is, is just same, same remark, same restrictions. so unique. Hear the bullets flying. We hear him taking cover. We hear him breathing hard, uh, and and it's, it's it becomes a very personal, uh, a very personal mission, uh, especially when when you start hearing about guys uh, taking casualties uh, down there. You take that that hits very very close to home nobody ever wants to hear that because mm, that could be a friend of theirs or a friend of a friend or just you know the fact that it's their countrymen you know you never want to lose guys on your side we care about guys on the ground we <laughs> stoner <laughs>
do our mission in relationship to guys on the ground. We are support element essentially for the Army. Why does it drop the flares? Like, because um, I thought flares were mainly used as a sort of diversion tactic for uh, heat-seeking missiles. Is it maybe to alert the people on the ground of of uh, a location to head to? Maybe we care about the guy on the ground. I'm not saying air addiction mission isn't caring about the guy on the ground, but it's not tangible. You can't really grab the benefits of it right then. You're gonna wait. Uh, a certain amount of time to see its effects. Air to air, how's that about the guy on the ground? Well, you're building air superiority, air supremacy, correct. But is the guy on the ground going to see it, get the tangible benefits of it? Mm -hmm. No. Close air support is about the guy on the ground. Combat search and rescue is about the guy on the ground. Um, we're this guy looks like he's seen some things, you know. He's got that kind of like a... Uh, almost a bit of like the thousand yard stare about him, the way he just looks quite, you know, plainly off into the distance. We're joint, we're a joint airframe and an air force. And that's what makes us different. Mm. Seasoned vet. Forward operating base, Gazni. It must just be so, you know, like the lifestyle of, you know, living at a military base in a foreign country. Okay, uh, today we're going down to Sande Sufla. We've been there recently, so we've got a good lay of the land. Um, keep in mind, the spiny's been pretty hot recently and they've had some contact from the same area around Sande Sufla. Uh, he went over the recent activity. Keep in mind the uh, kind of MO we've had recently out of there. They've seen the, the Taliban commander kind of looking at the objective first doing a quick meeting, picking up weapons en route. Usually there's motorcycles involved. Uh, you've also got the uh, Taliban commander that they uh, seeked a couple weeks ago. So you've got all that stuff going on right there in Aspandi. We're going right into the heat of that. So keep that in mind as, uh, as we get down there, keep your eyes open and uh, stay vigilant. All right, so our actions on contact, near and far ambush, return fire. Look to me, we'll either maneuver or we'll push through. IED, get 360 degree security and clear the danger area, and then we'll look to Kazavac. Uh, in the case of a complex attack, we're gonna return fire, move out of the kill zone. Indirect fire, get down, look for uh, distance and direction from me. Our actions on halt, take a knee, face out, and uh, the march intervals that we're gonna use are gonna be dependent on where we are uh, in the open area, spread out as much as you can. The bigger we can look and the more intimidated we can look, the uh, less likely we're gonna take contact as we move down there. That's all I've got. Man, that's a lot of information that they have to retain. I guess there's going to be some guys who, you know, are probably better at remembering all of that stuff and then they can relay it off to people who forget. I probably wouldn't be able to remember everything that that guy just said. What are your questions? All right, we're kidding up. It's 0615. 0615, kids on. Was that breakfast? Some oranges, some eggs, and uh, looked like some pancakes. Yesterday, as most days, we went out on a dismounted patrol uh, south of our FOB to a village of Aspondi. Uh, basically, we got some intel that uh, some bad guys were storing weapons in a building, and we had contacted them before. We'd run into them before. So we went down there to kind of check back up. And uh, as we got down into the village, um, we ran into some, some sketchy guys. It just, everything felt weird from the time we got down there. There was high tension. You could tell by the the NA's body language. He was antsy, pacing back and forth. The second that happened, we, we know we spread out, let the the PL do his link up. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just high tension, I felt, from, from the get-go. Yeah, and as a, as a soldier, you've got to be able to, like, feel that, you know, the energy, you know, because it can save lives as well. Like, if you can feel an ambush before it actually happens, you could save potentially countless lives. Hey, let's go. 
go. Go push. Oh. What's she doing there? Where's her um parents? He said everybody is a teacher here, so we are good people. Okay, sir. Blah, 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 blah. Having a, a translator is just essential, right? Absolutely essential you know, in a foreign uh, land like this. Good people, they have nothing to worry about. Yeah. We're not going to we're not yeah, going to take them uh, Just a lot of, a lot of uh, sketchy reports. No one had uh, the same, same story. Everyone, they were all family. They all lived in the same compound, but no one's story matched up. Mm. Unfortunately, we weren't able to detain them. Um, so as we started to, uh, to RTB, to head back to the base, um, we got word that the Taliban were maneuvering on us from the south. Be advised right now, we're picking up and moving back through Esponde towards Ghazni. The silence, man. Like when it went quiet there, that was quite unnerving. Just feels like something's, you know, about to happen. And uh, Hog, if I could get you uh, overhead of our uh, lead element uh, through a spondy, if uh, at all possible. Because they're they're just walking around. As they're we so exposed. We're back to the base. We had to cross about two kilometers of open desert. Mm. Very We were exposed. definitely in a, a huge open danger area. Yep. We got about 500 meters outside of the village and started taking uh, some pretty accurate fire. Oh. Oh my God. One of them could get hit at any moment. They can't even see really where the, where the fire is coming from. You just got to aim in the general direction of where the noise is coming from. Are they going to call in the, uh, the A-10s? Yeah, shoot. shoot it! There was no cover. That was intense. I mean, there were people trying to find tire tracks to hide, to get a little bit of a defilade behind. Uh, you know, in, in that position, the best you can do is spread out, gain fire superiority, you know, and then wait for, for some air support. Our comms were a bit of an issue at the time, and so they had a little bit of a struggle, uh, but they did have uh, A-10s luckily being pushed down to us. Nice. I have your position south of the tree line. We were quickly responded and uh, working with the JFO on the ground and, and uh, one of my JTACs were able to get hog on on station quite quickly. We were taking some harassing fire at that point. The uh, the terminology that they use is quite interesting. Harassing fire. Somebody's fucking shooting at us still. Uh, but luckily we had uh, the A-10s on station to uh, come in and do a nice show of force, which is always a, uh, a clincher for the enemy because they know what that entails. A clincher. <laughs> Butt clincher.
the A10 has proven itself time and again as being um, really a nightmare to the enemy. Just its mere presence alone is enough to, get, uh, to keep the enemy at bay. And, uh, and in that situation right there, uh, again, just bringing those guys in quick and fast um, uh, was enough to push, uh, push the enemy uh, away from our forces. It's a great psychological weapon, you know, just being able to have it there and the fear it instills, yeah. The ground troops that I work with, uh, when they think close air support, they think A-10s. And I think the reason for that is uh, they almost share the same mentality. Um, if you were to t say that there's a grunt in the sky, it'd be a hog pilot. They're very user friendly. I mean, any one of these dudes could pick up the radio if I get shot in the face and, uh, you know, employ. Those guys are really professional, very well trained. And if, uh, you know, you have a random Joe who doesn't know what to do, those, those guys can pull it from them. Is there any other plane in the uh, US so a war, you need boots. that can do what the A-10 does, that can fulfill that role? Like uh, any of the, you know, F-16s or maybe the F-22? Is there anything, like at some point, the A-10 is gonna be retired, like, or is, is its service life predicted to go into like the 2030s, 2040s? Like, what is the sort of a replacement plan for the A-10? Is there gonna be an A-11 maybe, or an A-12? On the ground, and to have boots on the ground, you need support. And you need the right kind of support to have boots on the ground, and it's the A-10, honestly. Even sometimes just the sound, or just telling the ground commander, hey, A-10's on its way, or we have aircraft supporting that we hear five mics, and you ask what it is, you say, hey, we've got an A-10 coming on. It's, 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 uh, yeah, it picks them up a little bit. That sound is so distinguishable. Yeah, it really is. It literally shakes the ground. It is amazing. Uh, you hear it first when it fires, and then you hear it echo from the gun in the sky. It, it, that sound right there just drives 11 Bravos nuts. It's amazing. <laughs> it's just unique. It doesn't even really sound like a gun. It sounds like a sounds like a laser or something. It's that sound of uh, uh, <laughs> corny like freedom, but it, it really is. It's just it's the sound of don't mess with me. It, it scares off everyone and shows you you're in good hands. I love these shots of them, you know, high in the clouds, above the clouds. It's just incredible. I think when people 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years down the road look back on it, I think people will look at this airframe and it will always be known as an airframe that was, some people view it as ugly, who'd want to fly that thing? But you know what, it was an airframe that got the job done. It got bombs on target when it mattered most and guys went home to their wives and kids because of the airframe. It, it makes it, uh, it's very hot. I mean, for me, aesthetics, like aesthetics wise, I like the look of the A-10. I think it's a great looking plane. And at the end of the day, as long as it gets the job done, who cares? Like who really, you know, is gonna sit there and say, oh my God, it's too ugly. Like humbling, it's that, uh... We are so trusted and, and liked by the ground forces. I think that's something that uh, I'm very, very proud of. They love this airplane uh, and, and uh, they trust us is the biggest thing. I mean, when you're shooting last night, uh, we just looked at it, it was uh, between 65 and 100 meters away from the, from the friendly guys. And for those guys to, to trust us wow. uh, to do that uh, on a regular basis uh, is, uh, is very gratifying. I got the greatest job in the world, man. I get to fly fighters when, uh, when people need me to do my job. I have the chance to save lives uh, and, and make a difference on the battlefield. Um, that is the mo when you when you hear the, the machine guns going off in the background, when JTAC's screaming, the bullets are hitting in his feet, and you can hear the bullets pinging off the Humvee that he's hiding behind, uh, and then all of a sudden you roll in, uh, you know, put some rounds down and take care of his problem for him. Mm -hmm. 
about it and then you know, the relief. hear the relief in his voice that yeah. is the most rewarding and fulfilling thing that I can think of Mate, it must just feel amazing you've got a huge group of experts at what they do with a singular focus and you can't really get that back once it's broken out awesome awesome documentary this was br that was fantastic really really enjoyed it very well put together the footage the dialogue from the uh, uh members of the armed forces it was just brilliant it really really i really really enjoyed that an amazing plane the a10 i mean it's just it deliver it, it delivers it does what it's meant to do which is strike fear in the hearts of the enemy that sound that the, the sound of that that machine gun is just unlike anything, you know, anything really. The, the closest thing I can think of are, are the machine guns that are on uh, like um, aircraft carriers or uh, not aircraft carriers or like uh, on like um, destroyer ships. Just that the high rounds per minute, it just makes the it makes it sound I, like I said, like a laser, it, like like a high. It's 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 so it's so cool. It really is so cool to listen to. I really enjoyed this doc, man. I'm going to see if I can find another one for like maybe the F-22 or the B-2. Just really, really well put together. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.